Okay, let's go in and take a look how we add and modify a checkbox in a Word document. But before we continue, let me just add to the whole thing that I am on a Windows machine. It is running Windows 7 and it is a 32-bit, not a 64-bit. And the office that I want to show it in is Office 2010. So let's go down and start Word 2010. Let me also just point out that the ribbon up here can look different from version to version when we are talking about Office and also from user to user. It depends on if you have changed the ribbon layout. When it comes to the file tabs up here, they should be the same. It can also look a little bit different. There can be more tabs or less tabs depending on what you have modified in the settings. When it comes to the quick access toolbar up here to the right, that should look the same in all versions of Windows. And when it comes to the title bar, that should be the same. So let's go ahead and start with where do we go first before we start creating a document. So the first thing we do is to go up here and click on the tab called File. You can see here is one called File, Home, Insert page layout and so on. I will click on file. Then you can see the whole thing here changes. If you look at some of the menu points here, some of them are grayed out. The reason is very simple. We haven't yet created a document, so we can't save it. But what we have to find is the menu point called options down here. So when we click options, we will get here our word option screen. And in here, we need to go in and look at customize the ribbon. When we're talking about the ribbon, this is the ribbon. And then in the ribbon, we have these tabs. And we need to go in and add a tab called Developer. So when we go down here under Customize Ribbon, we can see here, here is all the ribbons and the tabs. And what we need to do is add a tab called Developer. And we find it down here, if you can see. We just have to check it off, go down and say OK. When we go up and look here now, we can see that we have added the extra tab called Developer. So when we get that far, we can start creating a document. Okay, so to start to create a document, we go up here and click on File again. And then you can see up here we can either open or we can go down and make a new one. In my case here, I'll just make a new one. In here, I will get a whole bunch of templates. And the default ones tells me I can make a blank document. I'll do that. I click twice and now I have a blank document. Before we continue, let me just say that when you are working in a document, I assume that there is text in here. I have decided just to take a blank document, just to remove all the clutters here on the screen and in the document so that I can better show you what is happening when I click on certain things. So where we have to go now is that you can see here's our ribbon, here's our document, and over here we have our tabs. And normally we will be on our home tab, or at least that's where we normally will start. And what we have to do is that we have to find a tab called Developer. When you click on Developer, you can see there's a lot of options in here. And you can see they're divided up in codes, add-ins, controls, XML, and so on. The one we had to start looking at is the one called Controls. On the controls here, you can add text box, picture box, option box, and the check off box or the check box. When you click on the check box here, you will see it will be added to your document. So when we have added the check box, the next step we should look at is the restricted editing. Right now, this is a blank document. It is a check box I have added. Then it shouldn't be any problem, but let's say that you have received a document from a colleague that has a form where there has been added some checkboxes and you want to edit some of these. You can be blocked if the user have restricted the editing. And where do you find that? Again, up to the ribbon bar. Remember, you have to be on the developer tab. If you then go over here, you can see there is one called restrict editing. When you click on that, then you will see over here if there is any restrictions. And that can be many. In some cases, it is that you cannot change it. You can't change the way it works. You can't change how it looks, if there's any shadows, any frames, and so on. So therefore, it is important that you check the restricted editing. 
It is no problem if you, like here, we created a document from scratch, it's blank, and we have added these, and we haven't added any restrictions. Then you don't have to check it, but only if you have documents that's already created where there is checkboxes and other things, and in there they can be restricted or users can be restricted from changing these documents. So we have to check that in regards to restricted editing. The next thing we will take a look at is the size of the checkbox. If you want to control the size, you also have to control the font. So if we go in here, we highlight the checkbox and click with the right side of the mouse, you will see here that you get certain options down here and one of them are called fonts. When you go in and open fonts, you will have the opportunity to go in and define what font you want to use here. Because if you use a certain font, you can make the check sign look like either check sign, you can make it look like an X, but more like one that you have done yourself, or more like one that's done by a typewriter, if anybody remember how that looks like today. If I want to expand the size of my checkbox, I just go in and make the size of the font larger. So if I go in here and say I want, let's say, 20, I think it's too much, but okay, and I say okay, you will see the, the checkbox became bigger. Also, you can check it just by clicking it. You can see there's an X, there's not an X, and so on. So that's the way you control the size of the checkbox. What we also have to be aware of is that the checkbox has properties. Up here, when we go up to our ribbon, you can see here under controls, you can see properties. If we press that, in here you get this content control property where you can go in and add a title, a tag, so it's easier to find. I will suggest that you're adding a title like here. Let's say this was an answer to my question number one. So I'll just go in here and say answer one. Say OK and you can see here if you come up here here you can see it has a title now. Let's go up and say properties again. Then down here I can define what the check symbol should be. Right now it's an X. If I want it to be something else, I could go in and say change and I could change it to something else. It could be also be a letter or what you decide. Also what you can do is that if you want to make sure that the content control cannot be deleted. Right now I could delete this one if I wanted to because it is not locked. So again it is a build out of the restricted editing. So here I could just say OK, if I then go up here and then do like this, highlight the whole thing and put delete, it disappears. But if I want to make sure that the box stays where it is, so let's go in and add the box again. Let's go into properties. Let's go in and say, OK, this is answer number one. Answer number one. I will go in and say that the content should not be able to be deleted and the symbol is still an X and say OK. So when we up here, I can put an X in here, you can see. But then here, if I go up and highlight it again and want to delete it, I can't remove this because I am building on the restricted editing. Just that you're aware. So let me go in and show you how I would just set up very quickly a question form, just in big strokes, because I don't want to go into details here. If I wanted to delete this one, because let me expand in regards to making the font bigger so it's easy for you to see. If I want to get rid of this, remember, if the properties up here is set to that you can't delete it, I can't get rid of this again. So if I say delete it, it doesn't want to do that. So if I go in here, say properties, and I go up here and say you can now delete it. I go in and now I can delete it. So let me just set up here in regards to just a quick question form. So I'll just go in here and then make this fund a little bit bigger. Let's make it so that you guys can see it. So if we do ah, 78 is a little big, but let's do that and then go in here and say, OK, question number one. So you can see that's a little bit too big. So let's go up here and then just say, let's make it 48. Good. Then next line. I want the answer to question number one. So I go up here again to the developer, up to the question box up here, so that I'm ready to add that. So I'll just say here, okay, this is answer number one. And here I want a checkbox. Then I can just add the checkbox here. So 
So I can cross off none. And remember, I can go up to the properties and say this was answer number one. So, and I can make sure it can't be deleted, say OK. So now it will stay where it is, and I'll go down to the next. And I have to get out of the box here, so, and then I'll go down to the next and say, OK, question number two. Next line, I'll say, this is the answer to number two here. And I'll add a box again. I'll go up here, say box. I will go up to the properties up here and say this is answer number two. Two, and I'll make sure you can't delete it, and I'll keep the check symbol as a X. That's it. And you can see here, I can click here. That's my answer number one. Click here. This is my answer number two. So it's up to you how you want to build up your question form, but that's the way I would do it. So I hope you learned something. And I hope I see you again soon.